Shannon Sharp won't remember this because why would he? But I have actually only interviewed Shannon one other time. And it's when I was doing local Kansas City radio. And I think at the time, I just hated him because he always just crushed my team growing up. And then I finally got to talk to him and I probably was mean to him. He's a Hall of Famer. He's arguably the greatest tight end ever. He joins us now on the herd. Shannon, how are you doing, my friend? Nick, I'm doing well. How are you? Hi, right, Joy. It's been a while since I've actually been in been in this chair. So it seems like it only happens once a year, and it's after the Super Bowl. <laughs> Last year, I felt a little better after they had beaten the 49ers, even though I picked the 49ers. But last night was a butt cutting, guys. Uh, yeah, it, it, it sure was. What what do you think was the single biggest factor? that led to the not just the Bucks winning, but the domination that we saw? Well, it started with me once Eric Fisher went down um, and the offensive line, because if you can't protect Mahomes, he can't do what he does. And you mentioned it earlier about Andy loves to do what we call scat protection, which is get all five eligible receivers out in the route. So basically he says, I believe my five can block your four. Well, Todd Bowles says, I don't believe your five can block my four. And guess what? I'm so convinced that they can't. I'm just going to sit in cover two, and you can't do anything about me, anything about it. You're not going to be able to get Tyreek deep, and we're just going to go hunting. And the thing is, for me, is that you can't throw a team out of cover two. You have to run them out of cover two. You must force them to drop that safety down so you can get some one-on-one coverages outside. They couldn't do that, and they have just feasted. Mahomes had no time. So, Shannon, I obviously underestimated the impact of the loss of Eric Fisher. Mm -hmm. And and, but what I if they had to do it over again, when Fisher went out, they ended up moving three offensive linemen. Yes. They kicked the the right guard over to right tackle They moved the right tackle over to the left tackle. And then they inserted a new right guard. If they had to do it over again, do you think they'd have been better served? just putting an inferior player at left tackle and leaving the right side of the offensive line intact? Because it looked like some of the times guys just didn't know who they were supposed to be blocking. You do remember Von Miller won uh, Super Bowl MVP going against the Rimmers at against Carolina. Against Mike Rimmers. You do realize that. Yeah. Now, Shaq yeah, Barrett was right. on that yeah, team, although he did not play a lot. He understood. He's like, this is a guy I can take advantage of. And and even in Dominican Sue turned back the hands of uh, time last night. It was just a matchup where I don't think Kansas City was prepared for the defense that they saw. Nobody would, no one would, you, you could have told me, they're going to line up and cover two. They're going to play this shell coverage. And Kansas City is not going to be able to figure it out. But they didn't run the football. They ran the football a little bit to start the third. But, Nick, they got away from that. And you can't get away from – if your quarterback is getting pressured, the last thing you can do is ask him to throw the ball even more. Yep. Shannon Sharp with us uh, here on FS1, Fox Sports Radio, and iHeartRadio. Shannon, I, here's the, you know, the tough one for you and me. Well, not just you and me, but you and me. You and me are pretty prominent Patrick Mahomes fans. Yep. I don't think even think – it's a contra- people. I, sometimes people call me a Patrick Mahomes apologist, and I've said I've never had anything to apologize for. Right. The guy's been great yeah, from the been... very moment he walked on the field. Yes. How much of yesterday falls at his feet for not figuring it out? I put a lot at his feet because I felt that he missed some throws early. Uh, the, the throw to Nicole Hardman, okay. that's against cover two. Nicole that, Hardman, yep. Yeah, that play, see, that play is not meant to be outside of the numbers. It's meant to be in between the hash and the numbers because it is cover two. So he missed that throw early on. Uh, McCole Hardman, the moment got too big for him. If a blitzer comes off the side you're releasing from, guess what, Nick? You're hot. Turn around. Let me throw you the ball. You see, he never looked for the ball. Mahomes threw it. And he didn't look for it. He's like, what? What do I got? So he just yep. – and I, and I get it. You look at Brady. Brady says, look, y'all going to take away uh, Mike Evans? Okay, fine. I go to Gronk. Y'all going to take away Chris Godwin? I go to Cameron Bray. He finds other – I take Leonard Fournette on the check down. And I thought Mahomes tried to do that early, but he had some guys. The ball hit him in the face, mask, and they dropped the touchdown. You got to make plays like that, especially when your quarterback is struggling. Somebody needs to make a play. Even even my guy, uh, uh, my nephew Travis Kelsey, dropped a huge third down. You need to huge stay on third the, down early. Yes, you yep. need to stay on the field. And Nick, I thought Andy Reid. Why would you call timeout on third and two? 
third and twelve, I get. Okay. You don't call third and two. You don't call for uh, a timeout on third and two, and you know right before the half. What do the what do uh, the Tampa always do right before the half? They take that shot play. Score. Did you not see Green Bay last two weeks ago? Did you not yeah. see the Las Vegas Raiders? Tom Brady's gonna take that shot play, hoping to get a big play or a PI. Well, he didn't get. He got the PI. Spot foul. Two plays later, you get the pass interference. Ball at the one. You get a touchdown. So instead of going into half 14-6, you go in 21-6. Well, so let's stay there for a moment because a lot of my, you know, I'm from Kansas City, Mm -hmm. so I know a lot of Chiefs fans, obviously, and they were livid with the officiating in the first half. Yeah. And even if you want to, and even if you want to dismiss all the calls, the second pass interference penalty, that was obviously an uncatchable ball. Correct. It sailed 30 yards over his head. That, that, that's a bad flag. Even if you say the other ones are good, that's a bad flag. Yes. But the reason I don't want to spend time on it is the Chiefs did that to themselves by I it felt to me, Shannon, like those timeouts signaled they were a little nervous. Yes. It was 14-6, and Tampa ran the ball on first down. Yes. You call timeout, that's questionable, but okay, you stopped them for nothing. That second timeout was perplexing to me, and it like was daring Tampa to go down the field. Tampa wanted to just run the ball, say, we're perfectly fine. We got this team. This team yes. had all these yards. We're perfectly fine going into half at 14 to 6. Oh, you want to dare us? Okay. Well, we're going to take, we're going to take our chances. We, we'll, we'll see what you got here. And then, but that's right. Nick, I was all year long, I've been tweeting about Kansas City. I say, you guys are committing too many dumb penalties. And they blew it off as that we're winning the game. We're blowing teams out. But what happens when you get in a close game? and you commit these penalties. See, you don't really notice them when you're up 15, you're up 17, but what happens when you're down 10, you're down 14, you're in a nip and tuck ball game. The guy lined, if you don't know anything, didn't D4 teach you about lining up offsides, Nick? If D4 didn't teach you anything, didn't he teach you that? So you go from getting the three point to pull it. (laughs) Nick, Nick, you had a field, okay, you got, (laughs) you held him to a field goal, Nick. You're like, oh, okay, good, we got a chance. I know. They take the field goal off the board. You give them a first down, and they get a touchdown. It's over at that point. Right. And they and the Chiefs, I've watched every game Mahomes. Well, I've watched every Chiefs game basically since I was seven, but for very closely the Mahomes games, that you they did not have the swagger or no. confidence no. down 14-6 that they had down 10 to the Titans, that they had even in the Super Bowl down 10. They... You, it felt like they were rattled, and it felt like the, the, the Bucks knew it and seized on that. I want, I want to ask you this before you go. For, for, for Brady, what I said earlier, Brady now joins only one other athlete I know of in American team sports, in LeBron, where he can say, I'm the system. Where I go, the winning follows. Yeah. As great as MJ was, he only won with Phil. As great as Russell was, it was only with the Celtics. Montana tried it, got close. Favre tried it, got close. So what does it say for Brady that in his first year outside of New England, this is the result? Well, you have to understand, Tampa is a lot different than what LeBron went back to when he went back to Cleveland. This team was ready to win. They just needed the leader at that position to show them how to win. I believe they would have been a wild card team had Jameis not had 35 turnovers. The difference was Brady had 50, had maybe 13, 14 turnovers, which he cut that in half. And Brady understands the thing that you got to love about Brady is that he understands moments. He understands that in games of this magnitude, turnovers, you pay a double price. And so he's unwilling to take unnecessary risk with the football. And that team, you look at that Tampa team, and I said this before, Nick, talent, if you look at it player for player, Tampa's more talented than Tampa Bay. I mean, than Kansas City. That's, I mean, you look at, see, people get caught up Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek. And they at think the very that's the entire top of the roster. Right. Yep. The top, that's like right. LeBron used to say, we top heavy as bleak. But if you look at the totality yeah. of the roster, you look at player for player on defense, and you look at the offensive line, they make it seem like, like Mike Evans and Godwin and A.B. and Gronk, like them some bums. Those are legit all pro players. They just needed someone. Yep to show them how to win. Guys, you need to do this, this, and this. We can't make the mistake. They go from being the most penalized team to now they're somewhat middle of the pack. They cut that out. 
So Andy's going to have to do a better job of these penalties because either you're coaching it or you're condoning it, but it's going to hurt you in the long run. It will eventually come back to bite you in the butt. But, Nick, they can play this game again tomorrow. They can play this game next week. They can play it in Africa. They can't block them. They're not beating them they because they can't block That's them. That's the problem. They can't block them. That's right. Sh- Shannon, before you go, I want to tell you one thing because I've said it privately. I want to say it to you because you and I don't get to talk that often you know, on different coasts. For almost my entire adult life, the best Hall of Famer turned broadcaster in all of television has been Charles Barkley. I think over the last 18 months, it's become Shannon Sharp. You, have, you are an absolute gem. You are a fantastic asset for the network. It's a pleasure to call you a colleague and a friend. Thank you, Shannon. Nick, I really appreciate that. Joy, good to see you again. You too, Shannon. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.